It's time for another start to finish video and today we're using the Italian method for meringue which is a style I really love but I don't always love doing small batches of it in my home kitchen. I prefer this if you have a minimum of 300 grams of egg whites because you do divide the egg whites into two portions. One for mixing with the dry ingredients and one for the meringue. So that's why the more uh, egg whites you have the better I've got a little bit of water and then my sugar going into a saucepan if you have a water soluble food colorant this is a great time to use it add that right in then my one portion of egg whites and then my sifted dry ingredients the almond flour and powdered sugar and I have some gel food coloring so I'll add it into this mixture in a second that's all going into my large bowl here. Now, I will say whenever you're doing this in the beginning, it almost always feels like, oh my gosh, it's not enough egg whites. And you feel really tempted to kind of skew the scale and add more of the egg whites to the dry ingredients just keep mixing. If you have a second mixing, like KitchenAid kind of bowl or stand mixing bowl, um, I highly recommend putting it into that and use the paddle attachment to mix this together to create your paste. Basically, you don't want to see any dry ingredients or like powder remaining. You want this to be a really nice paste. I'm adding in my gel food colorant here, um, but with the Italian method, I think you have a lot of options. You can add your color to the paste. You can add your color to the sugar. You can add your color to the meringue. Do what feels comfortable to you. After I get this ready, I'm going to get my other egg whites into the bowl of my KitchenAid, and then I'm ready to start. With the Italian method of meringue, I think it's especially important to know what you want to do and be prepared because as soon as I'm ready here, I'm going to take that saucepan, go over to my stove and turn on the heat. With the Italian method, you're going to take that water and sugar mixture. We're not caramelizing this. This is not caramel, but we do want to get this to 118 degrees Celsius. So having a thermometer to be able to check that temperature is also super important. In the beginning, things will start off low and slow. That is just fine. Once this sugar starts dissolving, then I'm going to increase the temperature a little bit. And then when the sugar mixture here, the solution starts to just come to a boil, that's when I'm going to go back over to the egg whites in my KitchenAid and I'm going to turn that on to like a medium low speed. What I want is for the meringue to be at like at most a soft peak stage when I start adding in the sugar syrup once it reaches 118 degrees but I also don't want it to be like just barely getting frothy. I do want it to be nice and white and foamy when the sugar starts going in. Otherwise, it's going to be too hot and the meringue is going to have too hard of a time forming and it will be a lot more likely that the egg white is going to like cook and curdle and get really weird and gross, which is not what we'd want in a dessert. So because this is a start to finish video, I am showing you as much of the process as I possibly can so that if you want to bake along with me, you can do that almost as if this were like an online course, okay? So usually in my videos, I would edit out this staring at a pan that's doing basically nothing um, I'm leaving it in here so please feel free to jump around as you want to this is an incredibly long video I know that um, but that is why so as you can see here this is starting to bubble at the corner one more thing as we're staring at this saucepan that I did want to make a note of in the beginning, you saw that I poured the water in first and then poured the sugar in. That step-by-step -step process might seem 
like it doesn't matter what you do first but it actually is really important um anytime you have a powder um like sugar and you have a liquid like water it's important to put the liquid in first if you have the liquid in first once you pour that solid in it won't stick to the bottom of whatever you're using a saucepan a bowl whatever as easily and so like around the corners of the pan the edges of the pan the bottom of the pan i've reduced the chances of this sugar mixture burning crystallizing caramelizing any of that a lot by adding in the liquid first and i did the same thing when i added my egg whites to the bowl first and then added the powdered dry ingredients with the powdered dry ingredients because i was getting in there a lot more with my spatula i could have done the other way around it would have been fine but having the liquid on the bottom tends to work a little bit easier and more smoothly so that is something that whenever i can i like to make that choice things happen you know it isn't the end of the world but when you're doing pastry, it might be something you want to keep in your mind. Now I'm starting to see bubbles. It's looking a little bit weird in there. Um, because you do not want to risk any of this mixture crystallizing, just in case you have a spatula or a spoon or anything that has any amount of oil on it, you really want to be careful about what you're sticking into this sugar water um so i do recommend to just gently swirl your pan around do not stick anything in there if you can help it just let it do its thing let it come up to temperature because if it is crystallizing you have to start completely over and that would be so disappointing both because you'd be throwing out ingredients and then also you've wasted time when it's getting to about 100 105 degrees is when i usually start my mixer that was what i was showing you there and then after it starts boiling like that i want to keep a lot closer eye on this boiling sugar because once it hits 8 118 degrees i'm taking this off the heat you don't need to or want to let it get a lot hotter than that. So if you walk away from this, um, things could go awry. The other important thing with this process and why you really, really want to be prepared is that as soon as it's 118 degrees, you want to take it off the heat and then you want to let all of those bubbles reduce. You do not want to pour the still boiling sugar into the whipping egg whites but you don't want to let it cool down so much that it like re-solidifies and is cold again so this is a really time sensitive process Okay, as you can see here, I have that yellow paste still sitting there. I have my egg whites whipping. They're looking foamy, but it's not like a stiff peak or anything yet. The bubbles are disappearing from that saucepan. So now I'm cranking this up to a more like a medium high on my KitchenAid, and I'm going to slowly stream in that still really hot sugar into the whipping egg whites using the side of the bowl both to help stream it in in a really smooth fashion and then also to sort of temper in the sugar to make sure that I'm not just like pouring scalding sugar on egg whites. Again, things we're trying to avoid curdling the eggs, overcooking the eggs, having sugar clumping up. Um, if you just dump all the sugar in, even if it's along the side, 
it might not incorporate so well and then you would end up with like an egg white mixture on the top and like solidified sugar on the bottom that's not what we want so pour along the edge of your mixing bowl keep it on that medium high speed you want to kind of go slow but you don't want to go too slow again we want that sugar to stay hot we also don't want our meringue to fully form into a medium stiff peak while we're still pouring in sugar so again time is important i do want the meringue to cool off a bit it does not have to cool off completely but i also like want this to be you know not a like really scalding hot meringue when I put it into that paste so I like to reduce the speed just a little bit maybe it's like a six or a seven on my KitchenAid now and then I'm just whipping this to a bit softer of a peak than I would for my French meringue so something that when you pick the whisk up out of the bowl um, it has what in French you would call like a bird's beak the bec d'oiseau and it looks a little bit more like a kind of hook at the top like it's nearly getting to that stiff peak but it's just just a touch softer than that, just kind of curving over to the edge. All right, here we go. This probably even is a little bit stiffer than I might want, but that is okay. It will be fine. Um, so I have my almond flour, powdered sugar, half of the egg white colorant paste there. And first I'm going to add in just a little bit of the meringue. And this is really to lighten up the paste so it's easier to incorporate the rest of the meringue. Yes, I'm still going to do the macronage and all of that folding process, but in kind of a reverse fashion of the Swiss meringue method and the French meringue method, I'm adding the meringue into the dry ingredient mixture instead of the dry ingredients into the meringue. Whenever you're working in pastry, you generally are adding the lighter mixture into the heavier mixture so here because that paste is so incredibly dense we need to lighten it up a little bit with the meringue first before we can continue mixing in the rest of it before doing the macronage in a french meringue or a swiss meringue the dry ingredients are so light and fluffy and powdery that they are the lighter ingredient and the meringue is the stiffer heavier ingredient that is why we're doing it kind of what seems like an opposite way but technically speaking it's the same sort of principle as to what we're doing if you try incorporating the paste and the dry ingredients into the meringue i think technically speaking it will work but you might end up deflating the meringue too much before you can even get to the macronage phase so i definitely recommend adding the meringue into your dry ingredients with the Italian method, I'm still going to be looking for that ribbon stage. So as soon as everything is in this bowl, that is when I'm going to, again, kind of scrape my batter against the sides of the bowl, fold it over onto itself, pulling up my spatula to check, am I getting that nice ribbon streaming down off of my spatula? As soon as I get to that stage, then I can transfer this into my piping bag fitted with my piping tip.
whenever you do anything in pastry, if you're using a disposable pastry bag, cut off enough of the tip so that your piping tip that you put in won't fall through, but also you want enough so that it's not getting in your way and kind of going over the top of the piping tip. Then you wanna turn your bag inside out a little bit, put your piping tip and press it through till it gets to the bottom and use one of your thumbs to push the plastic bag through the piping tip at the end there that will ensure that as you are filling your piping bag nothing is getting through there none of your precious batter will escape especially if you're working alone or you have a large size batch that you are making you might want to use something like a pitcher or a cup or another tool to help hold the pastry bag open so you can pour all of your batter right in there if you are working in the vicinity of somebody else they can help hold the piping bag placing their hands where like the top of my picture is um, but if you are working alone no problem at all you can just do it this way once you do a lot of pastry making in your home you can just do this one-handed but be careful you don't want your macaron batter to go spilling out Today I am using a sill pad that already has a template in it. This is so useful, especially if you are starting out with macrons, um, but you can also find a lot of really great silicon mats that do not have a template and you can just print off your own. There are so many free circle macron templates on the internet. You can just Google macron template and so many will come up. Then I'm piping with my bag straight up and down, pressing down using strength from my wrist to push the macaron batter through the bag. And then when I want to stop, I'm letting up with that pressure and using a swirling motion so I don't have any peaks kind of poking up there at me. Other options for baking mats, some people like to use parchment, some people use Teflon baking mats. There are a lot of things out there. You may want to do some trial and error to see what works best for you and the kitchen you're currently working in. Even with the same recipe, if you move from one place to another, if you switch ingredients, if you're switching brands, if you know it's summer versus winter, you may want to do something different. So definitely play around and it is okay if I'm doing something that doesn't work for you or if you are doing something that works for you but you never see in my videos that's normal that's not an issue do not worry about that as soon as i get this whole tray piped here i am just going to gently tap the bottom of my tray and because i am piping this directly onto my counter i am first just going to slide this onto the back of my baking pan then i will tap the tray and then i'll just slide it onto my counter so it can rest and form a skin before i get it into my oven To make sure you are not wasting any ingredients make sure between piping different trays and at different times periodically you use something like a bowl scraper to squish any batter towards your piping tip if you do this just with your hands the heat transfer could really mess with your macaron batter you end up kind of like mixing um, and deflating some of that meringue in your bag so you Using a tool to do that really quickly and easily is definitely the way to go. And this is not just for macaron making, this is for buttercream, for whatever you have in your piping bag at any given time. 
I really like to bake my macarons at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about 148 degrees Celsius, for about 17 minutes. Um, depending on what kitchen I'm using, where I am in the world, sometimes that's shorter, sometimes it's longer, and the temperature can vary as well. So please do some experimenting. You may need to bake longer or shorter or use a different temperature than I am doing. I really like like to wait until a skin has formed in Minnesota in the kitchen I'm filming in here that is about 20 minutes and then I can get my tray into the oven to bake So these macarons are going to be lemon blueberry cake macarons. So after they have baked and cooled completely, I've matched them. I want to make some royal icing decoration for these shells. And because in my mind, when I was thinking about a lemon cake or a lemon blueberry cake, so often when you go to a cafe or bakery and you see that kind of a cake or muffin or something, there's some kind of really light glaze on the top instead of like a really heavy frosting so i am making a royal icing just using a meringue powder and water powdered sugar i am including both some uh vanilla and lemon extracts here if you don't know a lot about royal icing there are a couple different methods in making this you can use egg whites you can do this kind of method with a more of a royal icing like powder or mix um and it's really not that hard to make or work with it can seem a little daunting or intimidating so if you want to know more or if you want to see some really simple relatively easy designs if you want to start off with decorating royal icing on your macaron shells please make sure to check out i have a couple videos on my channel already about an introduction to royal icing and then some different methods of starting out with decorating your macaron shells basically what i'm doing here is i'm whipping up my water and that meringue powder into um, a medium peak a pretty stiff peak here and then i'm going to add in my powdered sugar and then i am going to add water and continue mixing just until i've reached the consistency i want and for this i want it to be smooth and runny enough that i can pipe it easily and it will kind of have a drip effect but i don't want it to be so runny and thin that it just squidges right off the sides of the macaron shell and leads to a really transparent glaze so that's what i'm going for here again this is a start to finish video so just in case you want to bake along with me i am leaving this whole process in here but if it's not something you want to see please feel free to skip ahead a couple minutes
after all of the powdered sugar is incorporated, I like to switch to a paddle attachment. This helps so that there aren't as many air bubbles later when we are piping the meringue and then as it's hardening. Um, sometimes you can see some little air pockets or something later if you just stick with the whisk the whole time. I really love using royal icing on my macaron shells. I know some people are afraid that it's going to be too sweet, but I think if you balance it with the right textures, it is both really beautiful in appearance and also it can add a really nice crunchy additional like flavor element to the top of the macaron shells. It really depends on what you put in to this mixture. So that is why things like the extracts are really important for this portion. Um, but if you wanted to add any other extract or spices or anything like that, this is a really great way of having an additional layer of those flavors in your macaron shells. I am not coloring the royal icing at all because I do want this to be like a white glaze on top of my lemon macaron cakes. <laughs> so I am just, once I got that to the texture that I wanted, I'm just putting it into a piping bag and it's time to decorate my macaron shells. I put all my macaron shells on a wire like glazing rack here um, just because I did want the um, royal icing to have a chance to kind of slide off the corners and I wanted it to drip really naturally if it did so so I didn't want it running into my counter before it had the chance to like really nicely drip down the sides. You could also do this if you want the drip to be even even more extreme, you could do this after you've filled the macaron shells and then the royal icing would have the chance to drip down the edges of the macaron filling as well. So this is completely up to you, but because I wanted a pretty thick glaze here for the timing of all of this, I wanted the royal icing to really have a chance to completely dry and harden before I filled the macaron shells and because of that I felt like it was best if I did this first before the filling. I'm also adding a few other decoration elements just to give it a little bit more of a fun appearance. I have a couple little sprinkles here and some edible dried flowers. You can do whatever you want. If you want to add some lemon peel, if you wanted to add some freeze-dried blueberries, there are so many options even for this exact same flavor uh, to do with the top of the shell. So let's go through, do that entire 
clear process. As you noticed, I put the decorations on the shells on top of the royal icing before moving on to some other shells. That's because royal icing, even though it does take a little bit of time to completely dry, a skin will start forming relatively quickly. So to make sure those additional toppings actually stuck and will stay on later, I'm only going to pipe a few of the shells, add some decorations, pipe more shells, and continue on like that. while all of my royal icing decorations are hardening or you could do this the day before if you wanted to i'm going to make a lemon blueberry cake first for the lemon flavor i am using both lemon zest and lemon extract and then i'm using some frozen blueberries i am getting my butter milk and the fresh lemon zest into my saucepan here along with my extracts depending on how much of a lemon flavor you want or if you want this to be more blueberry heavy you definitely can change the ratios of these flavor additions to suit your own personal taste. 
I'm going to just heat this up until the butter is completely melted and everything is looking really nice and homogenous. Then I'm going to set it aside so it can cool down a little bit so it's at about room temperature before I can pour it into my cake. That's why this is important to do first. Then I have all my other pretty normal cake ingredients here. I've got flour, sugar, eggs, all of that good stuff. I'm getting the eggs and the sugar into my stand mixer here first, and I am going to whip this to a really, really light, fluffy, ribbon-like stage. I want this to really lighten in color, and I want it to basically triple in volume. I want it to be really, really nice and fluffy before I start adding in the other ingredients. This is going to add some really nice structure and texture to the final result of the cake.
as you can see here this egg and sugar mixture is so pale it's nearly white it really is not looking like a really strong egg mixture anymore and it has gotten a lot fluffier i will pull up the whisk here in a second and you can just see when i pull the whisk up the egg and sugar kind of flows back down in kind of a ribbon stage so this is looking really really great so it's time to add in the rest of the ingredients Before I add the flour into the egg and sugar mixture, I want to put a little bit of it with the frozen blueberries so they are completely coated. That's gonna help them stick wherever they are in the batter instead of just immediately sinking to the bottom of my pan. Then I'm getting the rest of my flour into the egg and sugar, turning it on to a pretty low speed. I don't wanna over mix this, but I do wanna make sure everything is completely combined. After that, and I'm not seeing any more powdered ingredients, then I'm going to stream in that slightly cooled down lemon milk butter mixture before I fold in the blueberries. Now, this amount of cake is more cake than I need for my macaron shells. I am baking this in a 9 by 13 like quarter sheet pan here, just, you know, the usual nonstick spray, parchment, getting it all in there. Um, so if you are doing a certain amount of macaron shells and you're being really cautious about just baking what you need, you might want to decrease the size of this recipe. Um, there are three eggs, so you can divide it by thirds and kind of go from there. Um, you could bake this in a smaller sheet pan, just do the math, find out what you need depending on how much you're making, or you can reserve some of this cake, just wrap it up really nice in your freezer, either for more macarons later, or you could bake a larger cake with this as well at the same time for you, for someone else. You could really easily bake some like six inch rounds with this as well, whatever you need to do to make sure you're not wasting ingredients. I'm just using a small offset spatula here to make sure things are as smooth as possible. That way, when I go to cut this up and put it in my macarons later, I don't have some that are like ginormously tall and others that are really squatty and small. Then I'm going to get this into my oven, bake it until it's nice and golden brown. Then it'll be time to work on our buttercream, the last element of these macarons.
I wanted to continue my Italian method through the buttercream here. So I'm going to make an Italian meringue lemon vanilla buttercream for this macaron shell. Again, just like with the shell, I've got my water in first, followed by my sugar. I'm going to get my egg whites, all of them this time, into my KitchenAid. I do recommend a stand mixture, obviously any brand, but a stand mixture I think is easier when you're working with the Italian meringue than getting my sugar water mixture onto my stove. Just like with the macaron shells, I am going to start heating this kind of on a low, medium, low. Then once it starts to boil, once it hits like 100 degrees Celsius, then I'm going to start whipping my egg whites. If you start whipping them earlier on, like right now when you get this on the stove, the egg whites are going to be too whipped too intense of a meringue already by the time the sugar is ready. So you don't want to do that too soon. <laughs> Make sure to time this out appropriately. I'm going to do all of the same stuff. I'm going to leave this in here so you can see how long it takes me. And then as soon as it gets to 118 degrees Celsius, again, just like with the macarons, I'm going to take this off the heat, let it cool down just enough so that the bubbles are not boiling up to the top anymore. Then I'm going to increase the speed of my mixer as I pour the sugar into my whipping egg whites. I am just leaving this a uh, plain, there's no colorant in this buttercream, but if you did want to add a colorant, we did the Italian method before for the macaron shell. I added my gel food colorant into the paste. If you wanted to add food colorant into your buttercream here, you can add a water-soluble food colorant into this mixture here. Right at the beginning is fine. Just add it in with your water. Or you can add um, your regular food coloring in. If you have a powdered gel food coloring or something, you can toss that in with your egg whites either right away or you can wait for your meringue to form. You can toss in your food colorant then kind of as you're adding in your butter or even later on after that. Once you add in your butter, you are adding in so much fat that you will want to add in an oil-based food colorant. So just know that depending on when and where you are adding your food colorant, you may need to change the type or the brand that you are using. So I'm guessing that most people probably are not going to be coloring this buttercream if you're doing this lemon blueberry recipe because it just looks so lovely as it is. But if you wanted to just know, depending on what you do want to use, you may want to think about what is the best time and where is the best place to be adding in the food colorant that you have.
All right, I've reached 118 degrees Celsius, so I'm turning off the heat here. As you can see on my stove, there are just so many bubbles here pushing up to the top. Um, it looks lovely, but we really do not want that as we stream in the sugar. It makes the streaming in process a lot more challenging, um, and it is just so, so hot right now. So we need it to cool down just a touch as we add it in to the meringue. So here we go. I have got some kind of foamy egg whites in there, almost to a soft peak stage. I'm gonna crank this up from the like three, four that it was on to more like a seven, eight on my KitchenAid. And then I'm going to start streaming in the sugar again, using the side of my mixing bowl as a guide to go right in there, not to overwhelm the meringue, just to make sure everything is included and incorporated really smoothly and seamlessly. This is the reason right here. And as you can see here, I'm using one hand to pour in my uh, really, really hot sugar. Um, if I were using a hand mixer, it's possible, but it's a lot more challenging to be pouring in with one hand and really keeping a nice, steady, even pace with on a high speed with a hand mixer in your other hand. It's just, it's possible, but it's challenging. So if you are using the Italian method, even if you love using a hand mixer which is totally fine and I understand that I love hand mixers too but I really recommend a stand mixer for the Italian method something like the Swiss or French method um, hand mixers are really really a lot easier um, so here for the Italian method yeah, stand mixer is definitely my recommendation. Now, this meringue, we're not transferring out anywhere else. Because I'm making an Italian meringue buttercream, what I want is for both a really nice solid stiff peak to be forming, and then I also want the meringue to be cooling down in temperature. So when I start adding in the butter, it's not going to like melt on contact. So I'm decreasing the speed just a touch we still want to be whipping up a really nice meringue but maybe turn it down to like a six or so and then when I can press my hand against the edge of my KitchenAid and it feels warm but it is not hot and it looks like I have a really nice stiff peak I'm going to start adding in a cube at a time my room temperature unsalted butter I feel like I have to say that in every video because in every video, inevitably, somebody's going to comment and say, can I use salted butter? Can I use butter from my fridge? I don't, I don't understand. In pastry, unless you are explicitly told otherwise, always unsalted, always room temperature. If you are adding in salted butter, first of all, bleh, it's going to be terrible. It's just too much salt because buttercream, there's just such a high ratio of butter. But also, if you're using a cold or even cool butter, it's going to be at odds with the temperature of the meringue. And the temperature is going to decrease quite rapidly. And the butter is not going to incorporate very seamlessly into the meringue. So while it is possible, it's going to take a lot longer. It's going to go through a lot more stages of looking grainy or split or broken or chunky and why why go through all of that just just use room temperature butter if you forgot oopsies do happen in the kitchen um you can use your microwave to microwave your butter for like five seconds at a time you run the risk of melting it that is not something you want i would say use a bowl of like warm water not hot water warm water and put your still wrapped up butter in it just so you can kind of slowly bring up the temperature a little bit without running the risk of melting it that is an option um, otherwise if you cube up your butter like this and then again you maybe use your microwave for like five or six seconds you do not want to put it in there for a long time but just to gently try to warm it up and with smaller cubes it's going to happen a little bit more quickly um, otherwise just pull it you know 
in the morning before you start baking the night before you start baking it's it'll be okay i'm just gonna get all of these cubes of butter in here depending on where you are depending on what brand of butter you're using what depending on the type of butter you're using you might need more or less butter than i've written in the recipe that's normal it's okay so i always recommend with a buttercream to add in about 70 percent of your butter see how things are going, let it whip, maybe bring it up to a higher speed for a little bit and see, feel it, look at it, figure out if you want to add in more butter or not. Um, once you make buttercream all the time, like I do, it's a little bit easier to know, especially if you're using the same brands, the same ingredients, you can start seeing things like this. As you're noticing here, all of a sudden the buttercream is going to come together. And just by visual cues, you're going to automatically know, yep, I've added enough butter. Yep, this is it. Yep, this is the amount I need. Um, but if you're trying new brands, again, if you're moving, if you're in a new kitchen or something, thing you may also need to adjust exactly what you're doing or the amounts of what you're doing after i get everything incorporated i like to let this mix for a while more before i add in any of my flavors Because I really wanted this to be like a lemon blueberry cake, um, macaron, I'm adding in vanilla paste here. I'm adding in some fresh lemon zest here. And then I am also adding in some heat treated cake mix, vanilla cake mix, because I, yes, I have the cake that's going on the inside, but I wanted the buttercream on the outside to also just feel like this is cake. <laughs> Everything is cake. Again, if you're using a cake mix, make sure to heat treat that. Stick it in your oven for like five to 10 minutes. Just make sure that it is completely safe to eat because we are not baking this buttercream, obviously. So you want to make sure that the flour in your cake mix is baked off. I'm giving this one more really nice whip. Now that the flavors are added in there, I want to make sure that they're super evenly distributed. Then I'm going to get in there with my spatula, scrape down the sides of my bowl before transferring over my whisk attachment for the switching it out for the paddle attachment. Then I'm going to mix on a low speed for a really long time. And this is going to make the buttercream so smooth and silky and creamy and beautiful.
It is just about time to fill these macaron shells. So the very last thing I need to do is cut up the cake into little circles. I'm just using a tiny little circle cookie cutter here to cut um, what I need for inside the macaron shells. Um, this will leave you with some cake scraps. So again, plan ahead. Do you want to have um, cake scraps in something you're making? Can you multi-purpose those are you a person who makes cake pops or parfaits do you want this as dessert for your family <laughs> like there are a lot of options so that you are not wasting ingredients by making like a full sheet of cake like this to put into your macaron shell so just think it through make sure you have a plan beforehand or know that you're gonna have a few cake scraps so you'll have to figure out a plan for afterwards and if just eating them while standing over the sink is the plan then by all means please do that Finally ready to go. I've got my little circles of cake. I've got my royal icing decorated macaron shells. That royal icing is completely dry now. And then I've got the lemon vanilla cake buttercream and it's time to fill. These are more of like, uh, I would say the Korean word for this is tunkarong, which is like a fat macaron. Um, because the cake is pretty chunky, I'm going to need a couple rings of buttercream to get all the way around it, but just know that it's not as overwhelming amount of buttercream as you'd expect because there's so much cake inside so yes it's gonna look pretty chunky and it looks like so much buttercream but if i were to put the exact same weight of buttercream into this macaron without the cake it would look like a pretty normal macaron like still a lot of buttercream but like not as much as it's gonna look like from the outside <laughs> so after i get all of these laid out first i'm just gonna place the cake in the center of each of the macaron shells then I'm going to go in with my piping bag full of buttercream. Then I'm going to get them all sandwiched up into my refrigerator for at least 24 hours with anything that has cake inside. There's obviously it's a moist cake. There's some moisture in here, but it's not as moist as something like a ganache or something with a jam filling or anything like that. And so I find that a cake macaron generally will take longer to mature. Um, so in terms of eating this, selling this, having this at an event, just make sure that you are fully planning that so you don't end up serving someone super, super crunchy macaron shells ideally you've made these a couple days before obviously you can sneak them into your freezer totally fine um that will also help you with that kind of maturation process if you stick them into the freezer first then transfer them to your refrigerator you know the day before you need them or something that also will be just fine so let me get these filled sandwiched all together and then very soon they'll be ready to eat
Thank you so much for staying all the way through this video. I know it was a really long one, um, but I do get a lot of questions about how long different processes take, and I really love having the chance to show all of you um, you know, more and more of my macaron making process. So I really hope that this was helpful. Um, I don't know if you guys are people who enjoy making cake filled macaron shells. I personally love them. I think it is such a fun mix of so many desserts. You have all of your macaron goodness, but also you don't have to choose between having a macaron and cake because you get to have both of them together. So I really hope you give this a try. If you do, make sure to tag me on Instagram at Maddie Brame. Um, I love seeing everything you create based on or inspired by something that I've made in my kitchen. It is such a wonderful feeling. Um, if you have any other questions, you can leave me a comment down below or send me a private message on Instagram. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you're not already subscribed here on YouTube, make sure to click that subscribe button. I'm also on TikTok now. You can find me at Mac Macarons by Maddie. All right, until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.